After nuking the turkeys and exploding the hill pigs into dismembered bacon, life at Mantis Manor has returned to normal, with most goats optioning to deeply bury the emotional burden of multiple genocides deep within their psyche. The aura couldn't shake the feeling of impending danger. To distract herself, she invited her friends from LA to visit which worked for a while, and even had Noose Kalut doing yeah. triple lutz or some kind of salcha. But no amounts of fun walks or curbside iced coffees could break or out of her fun. And while the other goat sloppily had a dirt bath orgy, Aura meditated on her visions. But the elder told her it was nothing. That night their friend Jeff was murdered while watching Star Trek. This event became the catalyst to our season to which you have been unwittingly watching. Murder at Mantis Manor. Who murdered Jeff and why? Was it her? Or the Oracle's bodyguard? Or even one of the goats? In the criminal justice system, the people are represented by two separate and equally important groups. These are their stories. It is obvious that Jeff was not supposed to die, I don't think it was a practical joke gone wrong. I'll go back to the scene I need to clear my head. I can still smell the fetid stench of void bodily fluids. Are you sure it's not you? Could be. I'm lost. Who was this Jeff guy? Good point. Jeff made sound sound better for hairless ones. Even winning the Golden Human Mini Horn Award for working on lots of noses. In his free time he hit giant fake cherries and bite to nowhere. I have an idea, follow me. Akam's razor the killer is probably the most obvious. Jeff's new goat. Murphy. Murphy provided no alibi and admitted to murdering Jeff with love, but the toxicology report showed no elevated levels of dopamine or oxytocin. It was determined Murphy was a habitual good boy and was released to play. Scratching him off the suspect list put me into a depression, so I ate away my feelings with leftover nuke turkey meat, but the vault snuck up on me saying he had a clue. How do I know it wasn't you? All my victims are headless. That's not creepy at all. Talk to the Oracle. I didn't know if I could trust him, that he was an omnipresent teleporting mastermind. So he had no reason to lie. The Oracle called to me. But I couldn't understand anything he was saying. Again I was lost. Until suddenly Moose Galoo came running in. She said she exhumed the body for fun and stumbled across something weird. Jeff's bones had marks on them. Moose exhumed the bones of Jeff and... You do realize how incriminating this is. I apologize. I'm going to have to book you. Please stop eating, Jeff. Moose was formally charged and consulted her lawyers. You're screwed. She then turned herself in like a good girl and was washed to the slammer. Suddenly, the oracle flew in from his vacation. The coronary report said Jeff died of non-erotic asphyxiation. I felt sick knowing I charged the wrong person again. And Moose was released to her more comfortable bed. At least I'm scratching off suspects, including the hairless ones with sharp objects, even as strange as it is to be watching TV with weapons. My only option is to now go incognito and eavesdrop. Apropos of nothing, I also saw this goat in the back of a truck. I don't know what I'm doing. The boy's origin begins with the Big Bang. It is said he was created from a filigree of gossamer dark matter, which allows him to teleport and shapeshift at will. Because of his universal hatred for turkeys and hill pigs, he orchestrated their demise, employing a defensive landmine technique and utilizing Mantis Man for his purpose. He hopes to avoid charges from the Galactic Court. Devoy has taught Aura since she was a puppy utilizing her as his doomsday proxy. Teaching her 47 forbidden poor techniques once banned by our planet and Proxima Beta. Although his true intentions remain obfuscated by his rather dickish attitude, he remains for now a valued member of Mantis Manor. But it is rather annoying that he sleeps through all his chore duties. Will there be a time when the Voy's plans for universal domination do not align with the manor? Probably because he is a cat? We. Oui. For all we know, he murdered Jeff. It would have been easy for him. Too easy. In the criminal 
I was lost and being ridden hard by the top brass, so I took a hot bath to think. Then it hit me maybe Jeff isn't dead, but some kind of collusion is going on. Kalut, you're coming with me. Where? To Los Angeles to get to the bottom of this bowl of chow. We then took this very real plane to California, leaving the manor in Joe's capable hands. Kalut has never been to the city so I was worried she would freak out, but she was fine and made Sun Mantis. We invited Murphy over under the promise of beef jerky, but had Kalut pummel him for answers. I know nothing. Spit the beef or I spill your guts. Fine Jeff is alive, but I don't know where he is. I again had more questions than answers. Like why do my feet smell like Fritos? And who the hell was Kalut eating? This new dwoop. So you want to know about the cabbage walls? The dispute began in 147 BC when Borswar, a used as siege engines in the Battle of Carthage. Warring factions split off. There were the gentle aliens allied with Rome. And the hose goats who believed in freedom. Many bloody battles have taken place through brutal winters. Scorching hot summers. Many noodle lives were lost over thousands of years. In 1941, Joel was drafted into the war, and she single handedly turned the tides when she convinced a young soldier named Vladimir Pupin to join. His sister Esper held a great power, and although she was a pacifist, she knew she could end the war and save lives. The war turned cold in the threat of mutual destruction, and Joe founded Mantis Manor as a sanctuary. Once a year the goats don their helmets and celebrate. And although new threats have popped up since Esper passed, there is always hope. Derby, derby, derby. In the criminal we knew Jeff was alive, but we didn't know where. So we asked the Oracle. I'm not a effort and King Detective, you figure it out. So, we decided to give up and party a little in LA. Cuddle party. I'm so loved right now. Only sexy batches get tortilla hats. You're not a batch. Stop gatekeeping the gluten hats. Blarg. I was hungover so I listened to some tunes I really thought it was all over. Then the groundskeeper said he saw Jeff headed to the lake. She also said it was his birthday. The oracle drove he felt bad for being a jerk. We got at his leches cake and some balloons. But when we got to the cabin, there was no sign of Jeff. So we decided to party again. I'm so hot right now. Everyone was having fun. But Moose had a little too much and fell between the couch. <laughs> Finally, we realized Jeff was outside the whole time on his phone. Should we arrest him? It's his birthday, so not. I then contemplated killing everyone with this chandelier, but this stupid mucklover admitted it all. How's it feel to be alive, Jeff? Yep. But whose body was at the manor? <laughs> it was finally time to leave Los Angeles. Jeff refused to tell us what he did, but we clearly saw his body at the manor. So. We cleaned up and headed home in utter defeat. I took my frustration out on Moose Galoot and stole her poop emoji socks in a misguided attempt to feel better. Luckily the oracle brought me back and we did one more round at the dog park before heading home. Then, when we got there Vladimir greeted us and told us he solved the crime. But he petulantly refused to tell us. So we decided to lick it out of him. Should I? Do it. Fine, I will talk. Apparently Jeff had a twin brother named Meth, who was sick and very sad. Jeff looks sad. So he decided to choke himself, so that Jeff could collect his own life insurance. We were happy we solved the case, but we felt slighted. I got an idea, so we blew up the car he got with the money. 